This was your practice sheet for 4.4, very fine trig identities. And there's no way to really give a key for this because um, you're actually proving whether the sides are equal. So I gave you hints on the homework as far as online of things to do, uh, what side to start on, and some hints of kind of processes to do to help you. The last two are simplifying. So I'm gonna work a few of the harder ones out fully so that you can read them for yourself after we have checked. So we're gonna do number two. So with number two, we, I'm gonna start on the left side. Sine of theta minus cosine of theta and then sine plus cosine, and I'm gonna use FOIL. And because I see that one is uh, subtraction and one is addition, I know that my middle terms are gonna cancel out. So I'm gonna have sine squared theta, and then the minus and the plus gives me a minus, cosine squared theta. And now I'm thinking, I'm trying to get to two cosines. So over here on the right side are cosines, and I have a sine still. So I'm gonna think to myself, how can I rewrite the sine squared theta. And if you use um, your Pythagorean uh, identities, they can kind of help you with that a little bit. So I know that if I move this around, I'm gonna have uh, one minus cosine squared theta is the same as sine squared theta. So I'm substituting that in, and then I'll bring down the rest. And now I'm gonna combine my like terms. I have one I have a negative cosine squared theta and another negative cosine squared theta. So I actually have uh, minus two cosine squared theta. And that equals exactly what I was trying to equal, so I know that it is approved. Okay? All right, let's look at number three. So sometimes our inclination for number three might be to go ahead and, and rewrite some things, but if we notice that the bottoms are cosine only, not cosine squares, so we can't use Pythagorean identity. So we're gonna go ahead and multiply these two equations. And again, I'm on the left side. So I'm going to multiply the top, sine theta, and one minus cosine theta. And then the bottom, I'm multiplying these as well. So again, one is positive and one is negative. So I know that I'm gonna get rid of a middle term. So I really, one times one is one, and then I know it's gonna be a negative, and I'm gonna get cosine squared theta. Now, when we think of here, we can think of another way to write one minus cosine squared theta, um, because we look where we're trying to go. Okay, so we're trying to get one minus cosine theta at the top, and we have an extra sine over here. So we need to get rid of that sine somehow. So if we rewrite our top, and we rewrite our bottom using Pythagorean identity, one minus cosine squared theta is the same thing as sine squared theta. Now, if we look, we have one sine at the top and we have sine squared at the bottom. So this would cancel out and this would just go back to one. And so then we're left with one minus cosine of theta over sine theta. And that is what we're trying to get to. All right, for number four, and that's another tough one. Um, we're gonna start with looking what's in our um, left side and looking what's in our parentheses. Remember, we wanna try to get everything into sine or cosine if we can, and this is gonna equal one. So we're gonna use some substitution in here um, for the uh, one plus cotangent squared theta using another way to write the Pythagorean identity, and that was one of the ones that we had manipulated. So on your trig reference sheet, you will see this one, that another way to write one cotangent squared theta is cosecant theta, and of course the squared, because that was squared. And then we'll write everything else. And then now we're still trying to get to one, so the only way to get to one is to be able to have those signs cancel out. And so we're gonna use reciprocal identity and rewrite that cosecant. So we got sine squared, and then we're gonna rewrite here one over sine squared theta. And then when we multiply those, we get sine squared theta over sine squared theta, and that cancels out to one, or reduces to one, and that's what we're getting to, so we will write. Okay, we're gonna skip down to number seven. So number seven, again, we're gonna work on the left side, and the first thing we're gonna do is use Pythagorean identity. We can rewrite one plus tangent squared theta as secant squared theta, 
And look where we're trying to go. We're trying to get to secant, so that's fantastic. And then over secant theta. Well, I have squared on the top, one on the bottom, so this is gonna cancel out in one of these, and I'm left with just secant theta, which is where I'm trying to go. All right, number eight. Again, <clears throat> we're gonna do left side. And I'm not sure what happened to this little theta over there on the right side. Um, we are going to think about using our full first because we have a one minus and a one plus, but they're not squared. And so we can't use Pythagorean identity yet. So we're gonna go ahead and FOIL. So because they're different, we know we're not gonna have a middle term. So we're gonna have one minus cosine squared theta. And we are going to then take and think, okay, what else can that equal? Well, that also equals sine squared theta. Think about where you're trying to go. We're actually trying to go to the reciprocal of sine. And so we can now write, this is a reciprocal, one over co, uh, cosecant squared theta. And there, we are done. All right, we're gonna move to number 12. So number 12, again, we're gonna do the left side. And on this one, this one's a little bit different and extreme from what we've done. So we've been multiplying some things to get something, but if we look really closely, this is actually a trinomial. We have a piece here, a piece here, and a piece here. So we are actually going to factor. So we are going to set up our two bubbles there. And we have sine squared theta, so we can split it up as sine theta and sine theta. We know that this needs to be positive, so either we have two positives or two negatives, and because this is negative, that means we're gonna have to have negative in both. So negative one and negative one. And if we multiply that back, we get back to where we started. So this all over sine theta minus one. Now we can see, we can reduce one of these. This can go away, and we're left with sine theta minus one, which is what we want, so we are done. Now the last two, 13 and 14, we're just simplifying, but they're a little bit more intense simplifying, so we're gonna work those. So the first thing we see here is we've got two fractions that are being added. So we have to have like denominators, and these are not alike right now. Um, one minus and one plus, so we've gotta get them the same. So we are gonna go ahead and write our common denominator one minus sine of theta times one plus sine of theta. And that's all gonna be a common denominator. Well, in this first piece here, we have the minus, but we don't have the plus. That means this one's gotta go up here. And on this one, we have the plus, but not the minus. So it's gonna go up here. And remember, we're adding, so don't forget that right there. Don't forget this multiplication. Now, let's go ahead and combine like terms. If we have one and one, that is two, and I have a positive sine theta and a negative sine theta, those would cancel out. So I just have two on the top, then I have one minus sine theta on the bottom, and one plus sine theta as well. Now, we wanna get it um, as simplified as we can, so we can't leave it like this. So we're gonna go ahead and use FOIL because these are opposites on the denominator. So we're gonna end up having two over one because they're opposites, we're gonna have minus sine squared theta. And we know that sine squared theta also equals, another way to write it, is two over our cosine squared theta. All right, so this looks a little crazy because we've got two of them. And normally when we write, think about uh, when we write our inverse of just sine, we would have, think about multiplication. We got one cosine squared theta and one cosine squared theta is what we have here being multiplied together. So we can think about this, how can we write cosine as its reciprocals? We wanna get those best we can. So the reciprocal of cosine, uh, or one over cosine, is our secant. So we've got, we would normally write this as just secant squared theta, and we have two of them. So the two goes in the front. Okay, so then that's our final answer. All right, now let's look at number 14. <clears throat> We're gonna start here by rewriting the cotangent. 
uh, with quotient property. So cosine of theta over sine of theta. And then we're going to use um, some properties here on the top. We're going to use our reciprocal property. 1 over sine squared theta over, and then our cotangent we can write as our quotient. So cosine theta over sine theta. So we've kind of simplified everything down to get it in sine and cosine, which is always helps makes our life easier. But now we have this complex fraction here. So we're going to go ahead and multiply that. So 1 over sine squared theta times our reciprocal. And then when we multiply through, we end up with sine theta here and sine squared theta and cosine theta. And we can actually reduce. There's a sine here and there's two here. So we can get rid of that. So we end up with 1 over sine theta cosine theta. So that's just that one side. Now we need to bring all this down that we ignored. And we've got to combine these. So with these, we have to have like denominators. And so we're going to use sine theta cosine theta. So the one over here to the left has sine, but it doesn't have cosine. So we can multiply it by cosine theta and cosine theta. That's like multiplying by one, and that gives it a like denominator. So we end up with cosine squared theta, and this would be minus one all over the same denominator. So from there, we can think about what can we do to write this differently. The top of the piece, the cosine squared theta minus 1, is also equivalent. Think about your Pythagorean identity. Um, this is in a different form. So if I think about my sine squared theta plus cosine squared theta equals 1, and I've got cosine minus 1. That means I took the 1 over here by subtracting, and that would have to go away to give us um, by itself. So that would end up being a negative sine squared. So this would be a negative sine squared theta all over our denominator. And then we have a sine at top and a sine at the bottom. So this would cancel out and this would cancel out with one of them. So I'd be left with a negative sine theta over cosine theta. And when I have sine and cosine, that is actually the quotient property, property gives me tangent, and then I can't forget my negative, so I have a negative tangent theta. And that is my answer. I hope this helps. Please ask any questions.